applied math seminar today as we are very pleased to have uh, Dr. Bao Feng Feng. He's going to be talking about complex short pulses and coupled complex uh, short pulse equations. Dr. Feng. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you uh, very much for coming to. Uh, uh, actually, it's our first uh, our first uh, talk uh, in the Applied Math Seminar uh, in the Department of Mathematics, uh, UTPA. Uh, we started this Applied Seminar actually exactly 10 years ago. Okay. Um, and uh, I'm happy that uh, yeah, today uh, we, uh, th we continue this Applied Seminar. I hope we can uh, have this applied seminar continue for the another next 10 years. Okay. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, the complex short pulse and the coupled complex short pulse equations. Uh, yeah, this is the outline of today's talk. In the beginning, I'm going to uh, uh, construct derive this equation, complex and a coupled complex equation, from the physics uh, context, starting from the Maxwell equation. And then I'm going to show its instability by uh, finding its lax pairs and the infinite numbers of conservation laws. Uh, then I'm going to uh, uh, try to find its exact solution uh, by using the so-called uh, Herodot's bilinear method. and uh, uh, to get its uh, multi-solid solutions, which are very uh, useful in uh, application of this kind of equations. And uh, then I will show the detail of interactions of solitons, and uh, then if I have time, I will give a summary. Uh, uh, okay, uh, so first of all, uh, maybe I should uh, Think about the general audience. Uh, some of the students you never probably have chance to study the uh, uh, the nonlinear waves in uh, nonlinear optics. Um, so, um, yeah, the you know the uh, the, no, uh, the 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 light is basically one of the electromagnetic waves. The governing equation. The fundamental governing equation is a Maxwell equation. But depending on the different uh, situations, we uh, try to model them into a simplified model. Uh, one of the models is the so called nonlinear Schrodinger equation, which is a very generic equation for describing the wave phenomena in many, uh, many uh, physics contexts, not only in the uh, 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 in the nonlinear optics and also in the water waves uh, and uh, in the waves in the solid and the fluid me mechanics. Uh, whenever, uh, uh, whenever, uh, usually whenever uh, we have the instability occurs uh, for a uh, wave packet around some central frequency. And then, uh, you know, in mathematics, uh, and we can do the Taylor expiring around that high frequency up to the second order and transform the physics equation into an uh, equation in the Fourier space and transit back. And we, we usually get the so-called nonlinear Schrodinger equation. Uh, you know, the nonlinear Schrodinger equation is a very, very important equation uh, in, in, uh, in applied math. Uh, but however, recently, as the uh, the optical pulse becomes shorter and shorter, and uh, we we call it the ultra short pulse. Uh, so that means the 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 whites of the pulse uh, whites in the time domain is about 10 to the negative 15 uh, second. Uh, and in Fourier analysis, we know if the the, the whites is narrow and uh, its spectrum in the Fourier space becomes broad. And if it becomes too broad, and the Taylor expansion uh, does not hold. So in that sense, we have to consider the new model to describe the propagation of the ultra-short pulse. And uh, this has been done uh, in the last uh, uh, 10 years. And one of the successful models 
was made by uh, Schaffer and Winnie in the Boston University. Uh, they start from the Maxwell equation and uh, give this. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, give this uh, a very simple but uh, very meaningful model to describe the uh, the propagation of the ultra short pulse. And uh, it's very interesting. This equation is also integrable. That means it has very um, has many nice property, and uh, uh, the so-called we can have a lax pair, and also we can construct the bi Hamiltonian st structures. And this equation have infinite numbers of conservation laws, and also we can construct its uh, exact solution. Um, uh, but uh, today uh, I'm going to uh, in this short policy equation that. Uh, quantity u is a real valued quantity. Uh, however, considering the nonlinear Schrodinger equation and the many uh, model equations in nonlinear optics, and that dependent variable usually is a complex valued quantity. So uh, where I'm studying this equation, actually in 2010, we come up with the integrable semi and the fully discretization uh, working with Kenichi Marino, who just left us, and, uh, and uh, Professor Oda in Japan, where we are studying this one, and uh, I'm thinking maybe, uh, I think the complex value uh, uh, is more appropriate to describe the uh, the pulse, optical pulse, definitely, uh, than the real value quantities. So I reviewed their paper, uh, and and I, and uh, then I found uh, it's better to use complex value. And uh, very interesting, if we change that U to the complex value, and this equation still keeps its uh, good uh, property, and it's still integrable. So that's what I'm going to talk today. OK, so this is a, uh, this is a, a complex short policy equation uh, I proposed. Uh, actually, the difference between this equation and, the, and that equation is you just change that U from real value to complex value. And I just write it down. Uh, the, uh, the physical quantity from U to Q. Okay, uh, I'm going to show the detail of this one. That's the main purpose of this one. And and also, uh, in opt in optical pulse, especially in the very friend materials, we have to consider uh, the two components, uh, uh, where the even the one single node propagate along the uh, optical fibers. Okay, maybe I can switch to here. Uh, okay, uh, linear. Yeah, maybe I just show one example. Uh, you know, uh, probably most of you know the, the, the electrical magnetic field, including the light waves. Uh, propagate in most of the media along one direction, but the uh, the electrical field is a vector field, and that one keeps uh, proper, uh, pro perpendicular to the uh, uh, to the propagation direction. So it's in the transverse plane, but in that plane, uh, the uh, the direction of the electrical field could be. Uh, uh, keeps the same direction, and in that case, we call it a linear polarization. And uh, and also that one could be changed if the x component and the y component keep the phase difference of exactly 90 degree, and uh, then the uh, the electrical field uh, just uh, uh, moves in a circle, and that is called circular uh, polarization. And uh, the more general case, we may have the elliptical. Uh, can uh, polarization if the phase difference between x and y coordinate is between the angle is between zero and 90 degree. This is uh, the the phase difference is zero, so that means x and y uh, component are exactly in phase. That means the phase difference is zero, and uh, then the electrical field just keeps on this direction. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, and uh, yeah, polarity. Polarization, I think uh, most of you also have feeling that we have the polarized sunglasses, right? And uh, because of the light, uh, usually it's non-polarized come to our eyes, and uh, it creates some glare. And in order to avoid that, 
we using that effect, we design some uh, polarized sunglass to uh, you know to avoid those glare lights uh, from the road. And uh, yeah, okay. So let's go back to. Uh, Uh, so, my, so in other words, we have to consider the coupled uh, case. And for the nonlinear Schrodinger equation, we do have the so, uh, famous and coupled nonlinear Schrodinger equations. Uh, and uh, so, in this coupled short policy equation, we also give a model of this. Uh, Q1 and Q2, you can consider is a, a two uh, component uh, for that electrical field, and uh, we. In that, in this equation, we have a quantity B. Uh, it's related to the angle theta I just mentioned. And if theta is zero, and uh, that means uh, it's a linear uh, uh, linear polarization. And if theta is 90 degree pi over two, and then this quantity B is two, uh, that's a circular polarization. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Now. Let's uh, let's see how can we get the this equation comp complete short power equation from the Maxwell equation. You know, for the Maxwell equation, we can write it down as an, uh, a wave equation of this form, and the E is a uh, uh, electrical uh, field, and uh, that uh, P is called the induced polarization. And uh, if we consider the nonlinear part, we have the linear part and the nonlinear part, which I put there. Uh, and here we need to assume the electrical field. Uh, uh, here we just consider the linear case, the linear polarization. So we'll just get the single, uh, pol a single uh, uh, component equation. Uh, and that E1 is a polarization direction which keeps fixed where uh, the poles propagate along the fibers. Uh, but here, the E is a complex valued function, so that C dot C dot means a complex conjugate, uh, which is normal uh, when we described the, uh, uh, describe the wave packet, the propagation of the wave packet. Okay? Uh, then uh, we conduct the Fourier transform to that wave equation, and we just consider the one dimensional case, which is the case for the propagation of the uh, optical pulse along the fibers. And then we come up with this equation. Uh, and here, E tilde is a Fourier transform of the electrical field. Okay, uh, Here, we uh, apply the Fourier transform. And uh, uh, the differences between to get the nonlinear Schrodinger equation and the ultra short policy equation we got here is uh, after the transform, we have this. Uh, Epsilon omega. And uh, for the nonlinear Schrodinger equation, we can do the Taylor expansion. Uh, but here, we can't. So we have to keep the form it is. And uh, here, we consider the linear and the nonlinear part all together. And uh, here, uh, yeah, this is uh, uh, the, 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 the formulas. And uh, and for the ultra short pulse propagation, and uh, uh, it is show that this kappa one uh, have this relation in 30 ranges of wavelengths. Okay, uh, but that wavelength falls in uh, the uh, the ridge where the optical signal nodes propagate along the optical fibers. And during that ridge, and we can do this approximation. Okay. Uh, that is from the property of some uh, optical fiber materials, and they have this property. And uh, then we plug in that property. We in the Fourier space, we finally come up with this uh, equation, approximation, and then we uh, we apply the inverse transform, and finally in the physics space, we get this equation. Okay, uh, and this equation. We still, in order to simplify that model, we apply the multi-scale perturbation. So that means we assume the electrical field have all kinds of uh, uh, orders. Epsilon is a small parameter. Uh, and uh, up to the 
uh, zeros order. We just wanted to get an approximation for that E now. Uh, and here, phi Z A uh, are the quantities, as, uh, are the variables defined here. And uh, finally, we come up with this equation. And uh, this equation, uh, after the scaling, we get the complex short pulse equation I proposed in the very beginning. Okay. Um, this derivation is uh, very similar to the process did by Shang, uh, Schaffer and Winnie when they propose that. The only difference, I think they have a flaw, is when they, uh, they use the real value, the quantities, but they use the Fourier transform. But for the Fourier transform, I think we can go back to one of the definitions. And all the quantities here uh, must be complex valued because here you use e to the i omega t. And somehow they just assume that e is real valued, uh, which I think uh, may not be proper. proper. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's the, uh, the next time I'm go quickly to show how we get the coupled ones. In the coupled ones, now we have to consider the x and the y two components because we change the direction. The electrical field changes the direction. So I use E1 and E2, like uh, the two uh, uh, directions. And so that I have two components, E sub 1 and E sub 2. And each of the components are very similar to the single ones I just mentioned. Uh, I just mentioned. Uh, and uh, of course, the induced, induced polarization also have two parts, P1 and P2. And uh, based on the uh, nonlinear optics, we can write it down P1 and P2 in this form. And in this form, we have this part comes from the Kerr effect, a Kerr effect, which is the famous effect in optics. But the last two terms are called the four wave mixturing. This is another nonlinear effect when the uh, when they have a nonlinear interaction between the poles. Uh, but the last two terms can be ignored in the propagation of the poles. So when we ignore it, and, uh, and uh, then uh, we, we get these two equations. And uh, again, after the similar scalar transformation by, uh, by using the multi-scale multi perturbation, uh, then we can come up with this equation. And here, there's a coefficient of 2 thirds. That's for the linear uh, uh, polarization case. And uh, then we can extend it to the general case where we have the elliptical uh, uh, very fringent fiber. And in that case, uh, we could have uh, this E sub x and E sub y. And also, we could use a parameter r, which is standard in nonlinear optics, to represent the uh, ellipticity of the uh, elliptical polarized lines. And uh, that r is related to the, the theta by this r is just tangent half of theta. Okay, And then similarly, we come up with this coupled equation with that uh, coefficient b there. Because theta is between 0 and pi over 2, so the, 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 the value of b, that parameter b, uh, is in the range of uh, 1. Uh, no, it's in the range of. Uh, let me say 0 and 2. Okay. Uh, it's quite interesting that uh, it's also similar to the uh, coupled nonlinear Schrodinger equation case. Uh, this equation in general is not integrable. That means we have difficulty to find its exact solution have those good properties. But only when b is 1, so that means like uh, q1 and q2 have the same, exactly the same weight, this equation have a good property because it's integrable. Okay. Uh, why is it integrable? Uh, yeah, I think uh, here uh, in our department, we have uh, several uh, faculty working in the integrable systems. Maybe some of you have taken the course taught by Dr. Chow, the integrable systems. Uh, I'm pretty sure he talked about uh, the last pair. Okay. Uh, so that means if when the partial differential currents can be written as uh, like a two coupled uh, uh, system, like uh, uh, psi x equals on the matrix times psi, psi sub t equals uh, another matrix times psi. And then um, if uh, we call this system is 
comfortable, uh, that means psi xt equals psi tx. We change the order of the derivative and still keep the same. And then we could come up with the so-called comparability condition, uh, which is u sub t minus vx plus uh, commutator between u and v equals 0. And this one uh, in integrable system, we also call it a zero curvature equation. Uh, then if we, for the complete short policy equation, if we define uh, the matrices u and v by this form, and then uh, based on the comparability condition, we just get exactly the complex equation, a, a complex short policy equation. So that means, in that sense, the complex short policy equation is integrable because you have the last pair. Uh, and for the coupled short policy equation, we can also uh, construct its lax pair. Uh, it's a, a little bit complicated. Uh, actually, the matrices U and V are 4 by 4. I write as 2 by 2, but each of the uh, block, uh, Q and R, uh, is a 2 by 2 matrix, matrices. So overall, U and V are 4 by 4 matrices. Uh, and because uh, uh, the matrix, matrices Q and R have this property. When they multiply them together, Q times R uh, is the same as R. Q is just uh, uh, this quantity times an identity matrix. And then from the comparability condition, we get the, uh, the coupled short, complex short policy equation with that uh, specific uh, uh, parameter B equals 1. OK, you see here, and uh, Q1 and Q2 have the same width. Uh, the next, uh, I'm quickly to show, uh, you know, uh, the integrability. Maybe some of you have no idea. Integrability, that means uh, we have the last pair. That's also kind of not difficult to understand. And also, uh, we could fight the infinite numbers of conservation laws. For the ODE system, uh, and uh, uh, especially for the second order, if we can fight one of the conservation laws, usually it's called the first integral. Uh, and then uh, somehow we can solve them. Okay. Um, and um, uh, in the Hamiltonian system, OD system, of course, we have the uh, integrability of the, the OD system. But for the PD system, uh, it's, it's, it's more difficult. And, uh, but uh, the concept in physics is kind of uh, similar. That means if we can fight, because the PD is the infinite uh, um, uh, numbers of uh, free freedoms. So that means uh, to guarantee its integrability, we needed to, f uh, there should be infinite numbers of conservation laws. And uh, we, we do can fight them if the system is integrable. And, uh, uh, here I just using an, uh, a, cla a classical way to find their conservation laws by using one of the simplified systematic method uh, developed by Watati, which is a, a Japanese mathematician. Unfortunately, he passed away uh, two years uh, last year or the year before. Um, and uh, so we just start with a special part of the last pair, and but divide into two parts. Psi one and psi two, okay. And uh, here I put the complex short pulse and the coupled complex short pulse together, so that Q and R uh, could be uh, just in a scalar on the two by two com uh, two by two uh, matrices. And then we define on a new parameter gamma, and finally we we could get this called the Riccati equation. Okay, this is the uh, the famous uh, Riccati equation. Uh, and then uh, to find the conservation laws, we just needed to expand, uh, actually, that uh, uh, gamma in terms of the uh, series, in terms of uh, lambda, the series of lambda. OK. And the coefficient in that series, I sub n, uh, for n equals 0, 2, 3, and so on, will give the conservation laws of this system. OK. And this is uh, pretty standard. But this is local. The local conservation laws means uh, it's just including the derivative of the physical quantities. And in the next page, I'm going to show uh, non-local. That means the conservation laws have the integral terms. Okay. Um, 
So uh, we assume this uh, series term, uh, series assumption, and plug into that Riccati equation, and then finally we get in a recursive relation regarding uh, that uh, f sub n. Uh, then we can solve them one by one. We start from the zeroth model, we get this, and once we get f sub now, we can get f sub two, and theoretically we can get f sub two, f sub three. It's like the normal uh, series. Uh, uh, the the the, no, the uh, Taylor series uh, method solving the ordinary differential equations. I'm pre pretty sure some of the graduate course have taken that course. And uh, uh, and then we find uh, I just list the first two conservation densities, and from that we can come up with uh, Hamiltonians for uh, the first two Hamiltonians. Okay, uh, so that means the system have uh, at by Hamiltonian structure. But they have the two Hamiltonians, and then we can construct the infinite numbers of uh, uh, the Hamiltonian system. The non-local, non-local here, uh, we expand that uh, Q x gamma in terms of uh, uh, the uh, the series in terms of positive power of lambda, and then here we come up with uh, f negative one, f negative two, two non-local conservation laws. And uh, uh, here are the one of the Hamiltonian from that conservation laws. Okay, uh, now I jump to the uh, the third part, talking about uh, how to get the exact solutions for the complex short policy equation and the coupled complex short policy equation. And I just start with the complex short policy equation, uh, which I listed, and uh, uh, it is show that this equation has the so-called bilinear forms. So that means by uh, some uh, uh, dependent variable transformation, which I put here, if I have that u, yeah, I think I have a typo. Yeah, I'm sorry. Inst instead of u, here should be q, that uh, physical quantity. Uh, is like a division of two functions, g and f. And uh, for this special equation, we also have to introduce the so-called holograph transformation. Uh, that means the, the transformation between the, uh, uh, between the space variable, independent variable, and uh, f is related to the, uh, the dependent variable. So the holograph transformation is a transformation uh, associated with both the independent and the dependent variable. Okay, so uh, uh, then, after that, we can show this equation can be introduced into like this like a uh, uh, two uh, bilinear equations. And here, this d operator is not the uh, derivative operator. Usually, uh, you see the notation in the Mathematica or the or the Maple. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's called the bilinear operator, and its definition is here. It it only works on the two functions. Uh, and it's defined here. But of course, it has a relation with the ordinary derivative. Okay, and I'm sorry today I don't have enough time to <laughs> explain uh, this one, but uh, just to keep in mind, we can transform uh, this equation into the bilinear equations. Uh, why we needed to do that? Because uh, for uh, the integrability, we start from the different view of points. And uh, one of the direction, uh, uh, found by Hiroda, which is a Waseda University professor, but he already retired. And Kenichi Maruno, he just moved to that university. And he found a way if we can transform the solitary equations into the bilinear equations, and uh, then he had a unique way to find uh, its exact solutions. Uh, uh, but it's multi, uh, n solitary solutions. That means one solitary, it's like one one pulse propagate without changing the direction. Two solid things, that means two solid things with different speed, they collide, but they, uh, they just don't change their shape. Okay, and uh, of course three, four, and so on. It's very interesting that if we have one, two, three, up to arbitrary n solid thing solutions, uh, usually we have the infinite numbers of conservation. And of course we also have, we know that system is integrable. So, uh, so we, this is also an effective way for us to find the exact solutions. Yes. 
we can find its solutions uh, by, uh, from these bilinear forms. Uh, the solution is written uh, in, uh, maybe it's uh, in Fafians. Uh, the Fafian, maybe it's another difficult topic to, 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 in, to, to, to introduce. It's, uh, it's uh, from a special determinant. Okay, the, uh, the skewer symmetric determinant and uh, the determinant, uh, no, the determinant of uh, even, uh, number, even numbers of skewer symmetric uh, 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 matrix. And uh, it is always equals the square of something. And that something is defined as a function. Okay. Uh, so here, we, uh, I don't go to the detail. Uh, by the way, my paper uh, was postponed on uh and uh, submitted the physical D last December. It's under review. Uh, OK, so then uh, we could write it down a solution by this, uh, uh, by this Fafians. OK, uh, yeah, and, uh, and uh, this capital N could be 1, 2, 3, 4, corresponding to the one soliton, two soliton, up to uh, any uh, order of soliton solutions. Okay. Of course, if we have large number of n, uh, we of course we have a difficulty to expand them and write them in the explicit form. But it's a, a, a theoretical exact solution. We can just write it down into this form. Okay. Uh, now. Uh, let's just look at the one soliton solution. For the one soliton solutions, uh, the, you remember we have that Q is G over F. And for one soliton solution, it's the most simplified case. And F and G have just these simple forms. The G has only one term, its explanation form. And the F has two terms, negative one minus one quarter times another explanation forms. And uh, of course, Q is just a G over F. And we can rewrite them in terms of this such form, uh, okay? And if we assume that P1, which is a parameter in the one solution solutions, uh, is a complex parameter, uh, we have P1R is a real part, and the P1I is an imaginary part, okay? Uh, and this soliton solution, we can also figure out its amplitude. Um, yeah, the solution, but it's in the parametric form. The reason is the Q, remember the Q, the original model is a function of X and the T. But here, G and F is the function of uh, Y and S. And the Y and S are related to the original uh, uh, variable X and the T uh, by this uh, holograph transformation. Okay, so. <clears throat> um, and, uh, but these kind of soliton solutions may have some kind of uh, singularity, which may not have the physical meaning. How to figure out its singularity? Uh, we uh, remember we, you know, for the smooth solutions, its uh, derivative uh, exists everywhere. If we have uh, singular solutions, uh, like what I mentioned later on, the singularity of the solution mainly depend on this quantity after the transformation, partial x, partial y. And uh, we found out uh, on a simple relation between the real part and the imagined part in, the, in that wave parameter p. You know, remember in the beginning I mentioned this is the real part, this is the imagined part. And if the absolute value of the real part of p1 less than the imagined part, absolute value of the imagined part of p1, then uh, that derivative, partial x, partial y, is always positive. That means we end up with a smooth solution, a smooth envelope solid. Uh, if they equal with each other, which is like a critical value, and then in the solution we we'll have the uh, cusp point. So that means at one of the point, the derivative of the solution Q uh, goes to infinity. Uh, the cusp point, you know, we, we in our department, especially uh, Dr. Chow also studied the cusp point uh, for a long time. I think you, you, you may heard that word before. And uh, also we could have the multi-value the solution, which is not uh, real for this model, the loop solution. And if 
the absolute value of the real part P1 is larger than the absolute value of the imagined part. Okay, um, maybe I can quickly, this is not clear, but I can, uh, I can go to one of my MATLAB uh, program, and then maybe, yes. <clears throat> so this is an example of the uh, smooth uh, solid. And uh, here uh, I, I plot two graphs. One is the blue lines. Blue lines is, uh, a, uh, is that complete valued functions. But also I'm using the dashed line to represent the envelope because I take the absolute value. Um, uh, it's interesting that in this model, uh, in the wave packet, you see the we only have like uh, two cycles of the pulse. And uh, this is the case for the ultra short pulses. And for the regular uh, optical pulse, in one wave packet, we have we probably have a large numbers of uh, oscillations, we call the cycles. But uh, if the, uh, the, 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 the pulse becomes extremely short, and in that pulse, we may just have one or two or few optical uh, cycles, the oscillations. Okay, and uh, this is a smooth soliton solution. And of course, later on, uh, we, can, we can look at the, the, the propagation Yeah, in the propagation, uh, uh, you see the envelope keeps like the soliton form, but the uh, the real electrical field is like an oscillation. It's just uh, uh, it changes the face and it changes the shape. Okay, uh, that's that's where you record the envelope optical solid. Okay, and also uh, appear in the nonlinear Schrodinger equation and the coupled nonlinear Schrodinger equation. But if we change the, you see here the P1 and the P2. And the P2 is just a complex conjugate. Um, so a, it's a complex number. So if I change this, uh, uh, the imagined part and the real part to be the same, to be both one, and then uh, based on that analysis, we will get the cusp uh, envelope solid. Yeah, why we call it is a cusp? You see, at the peak point of the uh, envelope soliton, that uh, uh, gray line, and uh, yeah, probably you see uh, the the derivative goes to infinity. Okay, and uh, of course uh, we could also look at the propagation of this one. All right, and uh, maybe the last. When we, if we change this one into 0.8, so that means we have the imaginary part uh, less than the real part. Uh, we have a loop. However, it seems like I needed to uh, to change the range of the here. I, let me quickly. I have during the calculation. Maybe I just change this 1.5 to 1.5. See what happened. Yeah, you see, actually, this solution. Uh, on the tip, actually, it's multi-value. There's in a small loop. <laughs> Dr. Watkins, have you seen that? M maybe I can change the, my parameter a little bit better. Instead of, uh, let me change this one to point uh, six. Yeah. Now you can see that kind of. Uh, loop uh, clearly the, the envelope. Okay, but of course this kind of solution is uh, non-physical. In physics, we must have the single-valued solution. 
for the envelope. So we have a critical point in the model, uh, and uh, up to that critical value, the solution is, uh, uh, is, is uh, has a physical meaning. But beyond that point, and uh, we don't have its physical meaning. All right, let's go back to the Okay, and in this three uh, graph, it's not clear. Actually, I just show these three types of. Uh, okay, and uh, I just show the demonstration uh, of the propagation, and that one is based on the integrable uh, discretization, and from that when we come up with the so-called self-adaptive moving mesh scheme to uh, do the numerical simulation of this equations. Uh, today, of course, I, I, I don't have time. I have no intention talking about that. Um, from that equation, we can come up with this, like a semi-discretization. Uh, semi-discretization means we discretize the x variable, space variable. But we keep that s, s is actually t, keep that uh, uh, variable continuous. And uh, we can show this kind of scheme is integrable. That means it keeps the integrability of the original uh, PDEs. Uh, and it's quite interesting that from this scheme, we can construct the so-called self-adaptive moving mesh method and to numerically simulate that uh, PDE uh, very well. Okay, And in this kind of direction, uh, we try to uh, promote and uh, try to the community in the in the discipline area between the solid integrable systems and the computation mathematics to accept our uh, idea, uh, and uh, I think we needed to do more, uh, make more efforts in in, in promoting our this new idea. Ben, yes. Have a question coming in from uh, one of our virtual All right. Uh, in terms of eigenvalues, some spectral problem. Mm -hmm. Even the cusp on corresponds to the single eigenvalue. Um, all right. Um, could, could you repeat that question because they, okay. they can't hear me on the mic? Yeah, I, I got in a question from our uh, uh, of one of our colleague, uh, Dr. Pierce, and his question is that uh, does the cusp solutions uh, I just mentioned? Uh, corresponding to the uh, what the eigenvalue of because the eigenvalues of spectral problem. Yeah. Even the cusp on corresponds to the single eigenvalue. Okay. Um, to that point, uh, uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but what I can say, these three types of one solid solutions, the smooth, the cusp, and the, the multi-value, the loop solid solutions, uh, they come from the uh, holograph transformation. Okay. Uh, uh, the holograph the, the transformation, in some sense, we can view as a coordinate transformation. And uh, that holograph transformation uh, breaks in uh, the singularity, like the cost point and the multi-value, the solution. But we can map this kind of uh, singular solution into a smooth solution uh, in the, if we have the y and the s variable. So uh, in that sense, in that sense here, all the singularity uh, comes from that holograph transformation. But uh, the integrability system itself, uh, we can map, or we can go back to the original uh, system, which we usually call it the hierarchy. And in that hierarchy system, uh, I don't see the difference between the uh, smooth cusp and the uh, loop solid solutions. Uh, Okay, the, in that sense, I, I think usually we look at the eigenvalues. You know, one uh, discrete eigenvalues, probably we also know that, corresponding to uh, each uh, soliton solutions, to the soliton solutions. And uh, 
the numbers of uh, eigenvalues, if, uh, the discrete values corresponding to the different solitons. Uh, if we go back to the uh, to the system, which before the holograph transformation, I don't see the singularity in the eigenvalue. Okay, hopefully I can discuss with him, and hopefully. Uh, he says he okay. 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 Great. Yeah, I have 15 minutes. Um, now, uh, we continue to study the coupled complex short pulse degree, and. Uh, it's two component, and we have a coupled system. In this coupled system, we can also convert them into the bilinear equations. Actually, three. You know, the first one we have i equals one and two. They are similar. They have the exactly the same form, and we have the third one, which is equation six. And through this uh, uh, dependent variable transformation, and exactly the same holograph transformation. So I already talked about this for the single component ones. And also, we can construct the uh, multi soliton solutions expressed in terms of Fafians. Here, GI, the only difference, I have a beta I. So that means the, the element in the Fafians between G1 and G2 uh, are different in uh, here. OK. Um, not only the uh, two component coupled case. Uh, theoretically, we can extend this one into a vector form. That means we could have uh, n components. And, uh, and uh, we can also show they are integrable in the same spirit I, I showed here. And also, of course, we can construct their multi soliton solutions for that uh, uh, n coupled. That means we have many coupled systems, not just two. Uh, but, but of course, here restrict the meaning of this equation. Uh, I think the main box were just a two coupled one because it represented the x and the y uh, component of an electrical field. Okay, but mathematically we can go beyond that and study the mo uh, the the, the multi solid mo multi component coupled uh, equation, just uh, from the point of view of mathematics. Okay, and for that one, we can also come up with the one soliton solutions uh, in this form, Q1 and Q2 replicating this vector form, and uh, this uh, P1R and P1I is it's, uh, again the real part and uh, imagined part in the wave number. And uh, here I have A1 and A2. A1 and A2 actually are two parameters uh, represent the relative magnitude uh, of one soliton in uh, two components. You know, we have Q1 and Q2, OK? So you see, uh, I think, yeah, here they, they give this A1. Um, again, uh, again, these one solution solutions have the three types, like the smooth, cusped, or uh, loop soliton solutions. Uh, depending on the same condition, the, the relative magnitude of the Real part and the imaginary part of the wave uh, of the wave number. The two soliton solutions becomes much more complicated, and uh, and after expanding the Fafian solutions and uh, the two soliton solutions, we can write into this one for the FG1 and G2, and uh, and based on this one, we can we can write it down the two soliton solutions. Of course, it's kind of Messy and uh, uh, kind of complicated, but we can also do the so-called asymptotic behavior. The asymptotic behavior is, uh, yeah, we can look at how the two soliton solutions uh, looks like before the uh, far before the collision, and also we can look at their two solution what the two soliton solution looks like uh, a long time after the collision. Okay, and usually for two solitons, uh, if they uh, before the collision, they looks like a two separate uh, object, two separate solitons, and they propagate at a different uh, velocity or speed. When they uh, when they collide, that means they get closer and closer, and then they have some kind of interaction, and uh, and after the interaction, and uh, uh, probably the First expression that they usually uh, 
pass, uh, pass uh, cross each other without changing the 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 the, the, sh the, the shape of the solid. So that is originally what the solid looks like. It's like in a particle, okay? And uh, they don't change their uh, uh, their, their their shape. Uh, but here, very interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. For the two solid collisions in this model, and it's possible have the in elastic collision, and uh, and the shape of the solid could be changed. Okay. How how, how we can analyze them? Uh, we can. Uh, yeah, here it's uh, we can do the asymptotical analysis, and uh, we can get uh, the. Here we have two solitons. I denote by soliton one and soliton two, and these are the asymptotical uh, form for uh, for uh, for soliton one and soliton two, and uh, each one have the two components Q and Q two, and then after the collision. Uh, they have this form. Usually for the KDV and, uh, and even for the nonlinear Schrodinger equation, in one, one component, and the before and the after, if we look at their amplitude, we look at their uh, envelope, they keep exactly the same. So that's why we call they are elastic. But for this uh, coupled, uh, coupled complex short pulse equation, and uh, based on this asymptotical result, and uh, then we can define how the amplitude changes uh, after the collision. Okay, so here I, we define two, uh, uh, two uh, the so-called transition matrix T uh, sub T J one and T J two, and that uh, transit matrix just basically tells you how the amplitude of two solitons changes uh, after the collision. Okay. And based on the result, we have one condition. Uh, uh, yeah, th there are also other parameters I probably I didn't point out, but it's in the graph. We have alpha one, the alpha one one, uh, and alpha one two, and I have alpha two one, alpha two two. Uh, those uh, are the parameters. Um, I have two index here. I think the first index is, is the 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 uh, the, the uh, sub index su sub index means the uh, the soliton soliton one and soliton two and also we have a super a super uh, script index that means uh, we have two components remember the two components and we have two solitons so here I have to use the uh, two index indexes to to represent that and only under this condition uh, we found before and after the collision uh, the soliton does not change the shape. That means their collision is elastic. And uh, if this condition is not satisfied, then we will have the case that uh, they do change their shape in this solid equations. Uh, uh, and, uh, but this phenomena can be used. Uh, uh, I think one of the MIT professor uh, Publish a paper in the physical review letter and using this property, but not in this model. In the coupled nonlinear shooting equation, uh, he he's, uh, he mentioned he claimed that we can use this kind of in elastic collision property to design the next generation optical computers, because this can be the foundation to design the AND and OR gates in the optical uh, circuits. Uh, Okay, so <clears throat> so here uh, the e elastic, and I just showed our uh, uh, re uh, results, and uh, and I, I showed using the graph to show the result, and uh, this is the control plots. Uh, I guess it's for two uh, two components, Q1 and the Q2. Yes, the graph on the left is represent the control plot for. Uh, one component Q1, and the one on the right shows the counter plot for uh, Q2, the second component. And the x-axis is, uh, you know, it's a space variable, and the vertical axis is a time. So I just count the this is starting from negative 80 and through 80, and uh, and here we have a collision. But after collision, you see, yeah, you see from the counter plot, we can see the amplitude does not change. 
because the color keeps the same. You know, we uh, we do that, and also, uh, okay, sorry, it's not clear here. <laughs> On the paper, it's clear, but uh, yeah, and uh, and here actually I show. Uh, later on, if I have time, I can show. Probably I don't. I can show the uh, anime, uh, the, 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 the real time simulation of this pose. And here I have uh, on the graph on the left, that's uh, two solitons. Probably you can see that the different amplitude. And uh, here it's uh, two solitons uh, for Q2. And uh, there, there's another uh, graph in red that shows the, the, the shape of two solitons after the collision. You can see the, they just, uh, it's like just cross each other without changing the amplitude. And uh, it's elastic. Uh, but we have the case that it's inelastic. And uh, uh, yeah, this one is interesting. In the beginning, in Q1, in the, we have uh, t like Q2 solitons. And in Q2, we also have two solitons. But after the collision, and in Q2 component, Two solitons just becomes one solid, and uh, an another soliton disappear. Okay, and uh, this could be used as uh, the foundation to design the the, the, the the add and or gates. I think so because we can use either has uh, two solitons or one soliton has zero or one, and uh, after this collision, it's like a gate, and after that we only have. Uh, only have one soliton. And uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm not going into the detail. And, uh, and this is the case. In the beginning, we kind of have two solitons with different amplitude. I'm sorry, probably uh, you can say it. But uh, after the collision, you see here, there's only one soliton with higher amplitude. There's only one soliton. Uh, then another interesting case is we may have this case. In the beginning, in Q1, we have two solitons. And in Q2, we only have one solid. And then after the collision, we could produce an extra solid from this collision. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's, yeah, it's profile, a profile before and after the collision. Uh, we can see it clearly. And here we have one solid in Q2. And after the collision, you see like two solitons, almost the same amplitude uh, appears after this one. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, by the way, we can, uh, this one, I just mentioned our result. Uh, we can also continue to study how to uh, get the integrable discretization of those models. And uh, it also using the Herodas bilinear method. Uh, and from that, we can also come up with an, a good numerical scheme to simulate the propagation of the pulse. Uh, we name it as a self-adaptive moving mesh method. And uh, this summer, I'm going to uh, Taiwan uh, University and uh, also go back to China and uh, travel to Cambridge University, UK, uh, and uh, to make a presentation. And I think one of the main topic is just giving the talk related to this co complex short pulse and the coupled complex short pulse equation, and hopefully uh, they can accept our model. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I think this is our future goal of this one. It is a kind of a big project. Um, all right, I think it's uh, right on time. I I just stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for you all coming.